Good morning everyone, back on the south coast, doing the fishing thing. It's not been a great trip, start by saying that. <laughs> not a whole heap of salmon and the ones we have caught have been uh, a bit smaller. Just about to do some greenskeeping here, if I can get that log before I commence. Go on that thing on the line. <clears throat> get that out, throw it up here we put any cast in. Oh, stay tuned, hopefully you get some fish. We've both just put our first cast out. The sun is just peeking over the, the clouds there on the horizon. And we hope the fish are arriving pretty shortly. Both using uh, Patanostra rigs. Uh, a double Patanostra on one, a single Patanostra on the other. Just with pilchards for bait, just half pilchards. Hopefully there's a fish out there who cannot say no. What a morning, not a breath of wind almost. Still a fair bit of debris up on the, uh, the beach, but not, nothing terrible. As you saw, we pulled out a couple of bits and pieces from the water. That's about it. All right, cast number two. I put a little, uh, well, it's not a popper, it's a soft plastic on the bottom. And I've got my pilchard on top. There are some bites. I haven't got any yet, uh, but father-in-law has. So there are some fish around. Hard to say what the hell they are yet. <clears throat> Cast right into that gutter there, which is starting to form up nicely over the last few days. So this is cast number three. Let's see what happens. Tighten that up a bit. Yeah, there we go. I think I have my first fish for the morning. Yep, oh, I got one. Not a real beast or anything, but a fish! <laughs> Few and far between. Oh. oh my gosh! Go on. Not a big one. Better fish. Must be mid thirties. Thereabouts anyway. Just get him out of there. About mid thirties. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. Fish and chips for the afternoon. So as you can tell, early morning has come and gone, and now we are mid morning. Must be about eight thirty now. Um. Well, that was my first fish, let alone my first bite for the morning, so pretty happy. Fishing's tough at the moment. The, uh, the water is, it's pretty clear, 
But as you can see out there, there's still, still a fair bit of foam around, and even along the beach here. All right, and there's the 35 centimeter salmon that I got. Even there's not much else going on, I might uh, do a quick one on scaling and cleaning the salmon. Now the most important thing, I snapped his neck as soon as, uh, as soon as he came out of the water and I took him out up to the bucket. I then sat him upside down in the sand, which is why he's covered in sand, and uh, bled him. Australian salmon people say it tastes bad. I beg to differ. Many people down here on the coast beg to differ. It's not bad. You've just got to know how to kill it quickly and get all of that blood out of it very, very quickly. So here goes. Scaling. You can use a knife, you can get scalers, but I just use a knife. From the tail forward. All the scales, if you just re they'll just reverse on themselves and come off. I do it down on the beach because this sort of a, these scales and eventually the guts uh, act as burly, which of course is free burly. <laughs> it's a good thing. Of course, while I'm doing this, I'm checking on my rod because uh, we've had a few bites suddenly and we're, we're in between tides now. And we're definitely not anywhere near the high tide and we're uh, rapidly heading towards low tide so once you've got all the scales off you can give them a quick rinse now if you like but to be honest no need we're going to rinse him after we're going to hold the fish just like this and you'll see this little poo hole there <laughs> knife in you should have the tip of the knife up here on a fish this small. There you go, you can see it right there. And all you're going to do is force down against the backbone. Separate it up the guts and up the middle. There you go. Now the fun part. I like to get the gills out as well. So, turn them over just like that. Open them up, and if you can get the gills out, even better. So I'll hold it like that, pull that first gill off from under the chin, rip the other part off, rip the other couple of gills off uh, the broken neck, and then head your way down towards the belly. As I said, this is all free burly, so fling it straight in. Pull it out just like that. Make sure no seagulls around, because they'll uh, make quick of it, quick work of it. Pull all those guts out. There we go. Nice and clean. Now there's one more step that I like to do, which is run my fingernail down this backbone, just like that. And there's usually whatever leftover blood that you haven't got by bleeding him quickly is sitting in there. I'll just run my finger down there, fingernail I should say, along the backbone, around the spine. There you go, there's the last bits of blood. Now, because I killed him quickly, there's not much in there. I snapped the neck straight away. There we go. Now some people including me, we'll rip these off too, these fins. You're not going to eat those. That can go in. As can this. Same again on the other side. Just pretty much bend them back on themselves. Make sure you're not losing too much flesh and just snap them off. There we go, all done. Now we'll just give them a quick rinse, get all the sand, blood, and whatever else out of there. And then we're done. A 
lovely smell. <laughs> Ammonia like. I'm gonna get that from most fish. For those who follow my channel and have done for any amount of time you'll know that I don't generally take salmon this size but I've been advised by a few people on the channel and down here at the coast that go for the smaller ones and uh, try them out. The thing is we generally make curries out of them me and my family so bigger firmer fish are perfect for that the smaller ones might be good for other things like fish and chips but uh, not so much for curry there we go one cleaned Australian salmon 35 centimeters 